Hi, welcome to another edition of the Grumpy Programmer. Today we're going to talk about why Java sucks. The Java programming language is the worst language since COBOL. And today's short session will talk about the reasons why. I've always observed that the vast majority of the programmers will always select the most verbose language that gives them the most employment prospects the one that makes you look like you're getting a lot done because it's very verbose. Very brief languages like APL and the more advanced languages that have come along have never been adopted hardly at all because they're too brief, they're too simple, they're too clear, and so they, they get ignored. And the things that create these sprawling, hyper-complex systems that never seem to get debugged completely that's the language that the, the bulk of the programmers pick. And that's because they're mediocre and they're insecure about what they're going to do when they finish the project. So they resolve kind of internally never to finish anything. Oriented programming has been rather a disaster. Uh, it's been going on for quite some time and big systems are more unreliable than ever. And all you have to do is look at some of the most recent disasters, the healthcare.gov website and the Oregon uh, website, those were all done with object-oriented principles. And uh, the healthcare.gov website, I think, is over $700 million to build a website that just does an enrollment form. And there's just, it's mind blowing how uh, inefficient these large uh, Java products are. You can see how slow Eclipse is can see all these things that have been built in Java and they're slow as a snail. They're so voluminous no one can understand them. There's just nothing great about it. Um, the garbage collection that Java institutionalized was its greatest weakness because it. the reason they had to do garbage collection is they didn't know how to solve uh, pointers and the concepts, underlying concepts of whether memory blocks were still in use or not. The key principles of Java was they were going to build a Java virtual, this virtual machine underlying it all. Of course, this was a copy of the P-System of Niklas Wirth's uh, UCSD Pascal, which was one of the greatest systems ever invented in a tragedy for mankind that, that we went with Microsoft instead of open source UCSD, which was uh, a superior system in almost every respect. It used Pascal as the core language, just like the original uh, Macintosh OS. And, you know, when Macintosh switched from Pascal to C, the reliability went right through into the toilet. Anyway, the virtual machine was just not well designed from the beginning, and they still suffer from it. You know, they didn't include printing, and then they added it, grafted it on. They didn't very, do a very good job of it. And they never created an escape hatch, so you could uh, you know, do 3D graphics and get to the hardware and access things that you needed to. If they had created a sensible plug-in architecture, very similar to what Microsoft has done in, in their Windows system, where they created device driver methodology and they published it and they allowed all these people to create new plugins for it. If Java had created a sensible plug-in architecture, uh, then the virtual machine could have been left alone and we'd still be running Java programs from 20 years ago. But you can't do that now because they keep breaking Java. But probably the worst thing about Java is the ridiculous quantity and overlapping libraries that have sprung up around it. I mean, you want to draw a rectangle on the screen, well, you've got 10 different ways to do it. and it's just mind-numbingly complex. No one ever prints out the user manual for the libraries in Java, so they've built these fantastic documentation systems into their development environments, which are compensating for the fact that if you'd printed out the reference manual for all the Java APIs, what would it be, 3,000 pages, 5,000 pages? I mean, do you honestly think it takes 5,000 pages to draw rectangles and, and handle an event? Uh, they could have just cloned OS 7 of the Macintosh, you know, the original quick draw system. Boy, would that have been uh, a, a huge improvement. Instead, they created their own cockamamie graphics libraries that were just 
They didn't have a good feel for it. It wasn't their strength. And instead of uh, using the work of other people and admitting that they didn't know this area, they they reinvented the wheel and it came you know out hexagonal instead of round. This section of this talk is really the big one, which is the Achilles heel of object-oriented programming. And Java exemplifies this, is that when they created the object-oriented thing, they were really trying to hide pointers. In C, you have this horrible problem that if you create a pointer and you set it to the number three, and then you indirect through that pointer, you're going to be writing into memory location three. And since, of course, many of the operating systems are not really very well protected, you've just blasted low memory, which breaks the interrupt vectors and crashes your computer hard as a rock. Of course, they protect low memory, but uh, let's face it, the, Java, the reason Java created the whole objects was they were afraid of pointer arithmetic because it was, quote, considered dangerous. So they created this whole thing to hide it. But the problem with pointers and the way they supposedly fixed it in Java is that you had to create the object using, you know, you have to create the object, instantiate the object, then you get a pointer to it. Then you can copy that pointer a hundred times, and when the last reference to the pointer is is no longer used, the reference counts go down to zero, and Java detects that that block is no longer needed, and it, it deallocates it. And in theory, it's all supposed to work great. But there is a problem here. You can't refer to the object until it's been created, which means that if you have a system of 20,000 objects, you have to make sure that you that the person who's the you know the subroutine that the function that's going to create the object does that before the functions that use the object touch it because if you ever touch an object before it's ready you get the null, null pointer exception and really java is a null pointer hell who hasn't in, been in some program been working away and then suddenly it craps out and you get the crash dump and like on the Macintosh, you get a crash dump that's 80 levels deep, and at the bottom it says null pointer. And you go, who on earth can understand an 80 level deep program? That's the other f fatal flaw of Java, is that the programs have excessive depth because functions don't do very much, and they bounce around going through inheritance chains to finally find something that handles it, the, you know, the particular function you're doing. Java is terrible, and I wish people would just stop. I would almost pick any other language, exception of COBOL, 